Hey, everybody, we're back. All right. So our next startup, um, and, and thanks, by the way, everybody, for that engagement in our last session. That's awesome. Keep that coming. Um, I'm going to introduce in Aurobah. He's with Stride. Stride's working on application of a new seismic technology for geothermal applications. So a technology that has been applied in oil and gas. So I'm going to get out of the way, introduce Amin, and then we'll be back for a Q&A session after his presentation. Thank you. That's, that's for me now. Okay. So, um, yeah, good morning and good afternoon and good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for joining this session uh, of the Pivot 2022. Um, Amin Warabah, I'm a head of processing at Stride, and I'm joined today also by Nick Tranter, our business development manager uh, for New Energy. Uh, so the presentation is about um, how we are stride making um, or supporting the renewable industry um, to de-risk their subsurface activities by making seismic and especially high density seismic um, simple and affordable. So um, what I would like to cover in the next 15 or 20 minutes is, is the following. So first of all, well, I'm not, not assuming that everybody know, knows what seismic is, so just briefly give you a crash course on, on seismic imaging, then we'll see why seismic should be useful for renewables, uh, especially geothermal. Um, and then you know, what, what is my making this seismic and especially high density seismic uh, more accessible for these industries? And give some examples. So I've got examples from CCUS, but also from geothermal and, and, and some others as well, uh, just to make a few different points uh, uh, across. And then we will finish by um, Sierra, what, what could help increase the uptake of these technologies or the seismic technology and the geothermal and in the renewables in general, and maybe finish with uh, some uh, conclusions and discussions. So um, what is seismic imaging? So surface seismic imaging in particular is, is a method that um, uses the propagation and reflection of sound waves through the different geological formations to create an image of the subsurface. So it consists mainly of um, inject, injecting some sort of vibrations into the, the ground and then recording the energy that bounces back at the surface uh, or at the different interfaces actually um, to the surface um, and using many seismic sensors uh, also laid on the surface. Um, seismic survey could cover areas of few kil square kilometers to a few thousands of square kilometers depending on the, on the applications. So why um, seismic uh, well, should be a good tool for geothermal. Um, well, first of all, seismic is a technology that has been used in the oil and gas industry for many decades, uh, has proven to be the method of choice in exploring the subsurface, whether the target is a few hundred meters under the surface or a few thousands of meters under the subsurface. Um, geothermal targets depths uh, are usually within this kind of range and also require resolution, which is around tens of meters to hundreds of meters, which is also uh, within the seismic range of capabilities. Um, seismic also delivers um, images that are um, a good representation of a structure, what structural ge geology looks like, unlike other geophysical methods, which are sometimes sensitive to different phys physical properties, which are not directly recognizable. Uh, seismic is sensitive also to fluid content and can be used to image faults and fractures, uh, which we all know that are very important to study uh, most of the ge geothermal plays. Um, seismic attributes uh, can also be linked to different uh, rock properties like um, porosity, permeability, uh, and changes in fluid content as well, which is also important. Um, monitoring is likely to be required to assess the evolution of the geothermal site um, in time and, and track the fluid movements. That's where uh, what we call 4D seismic becomes handy by creating um, snapshots of the subsurface. Um, induced seismicity and natural seismicity monitoring is another area where seismic could be um, um, could play a key role actually in reassuring the public and also um, give, um, give a real, real risk uh, assessment of, the, of this phenomena. And also when, you know, when drilling is required, drilling hazards like fault casts, gas pockets, etc., cetera, are all important to be in it before you start drilling, which could prevent serious incidents during drilling. So uh, it was a long list. So we see that seismic really ticks a lot of boxes, um, technically at least. And, so why is not used as often as it should be for geothermal exploration? Well, first of all, is obviously is the cost. You know, cost of course is um, seismic acquisition with commercial technologies is expensive, 
uh, especially if high density seismic is acquired. So that's why actually um, the latter used to be exclusively the oil and gas industry, while maybe 2Ds or sparse 3Ds were usually the only affordable solution for renewable industries. And there's a, uh, a perceived complexity. Um, uh, equipments and labor need to be needed to be sourced. Permitting can take months. HSSE risk associated with these operations can be um, a bit overwhelming. Um, resources, resources are needed to manage, um, to be managed, uh, not only for the acquisition, but also for processing the data to make the image and also make the interpretation of the end. So all of these have an, an impact on the feasibility and even the perceived value of doing seismic in the first place. So the good news is that seismic technology has evolved lately towards um, a new direction that is much more compact, um, uh, lightweight, um, uh, environmentally friendly, simpler to use, and more importantly, much lower cost. Uh, so seismic receivers have um, recently gone through an incredible miniaturization and becoming uh, completely autonomous, which means that um, what we mean by autonomous is that the sensor and the recording system are merged all in, in one piece. Um, some of these nodes, like the stride nodes, actually are about the size of a single geophile sensor, which is quite incredible, which you can see here on the bottom left corner of the screen. Um, the seismic sources, um, also not reaching the same level of uh, miniaturization, um, they are still offering a wide variety of sizes and um, powers, uh, which also gives you know a, a lot of choices to be to become very nimble in the way you acquire size. So, is there really an uptake of seismic in, in renewables and geothermal in particular? So yes, uh, half of actually of the seismic projects used um, by our uh, for our systems actually are for non iron gas applications, 15% of these actually for geothermal. In fact, one of the first users of our system when we commercialized the system in 2022 were actually geothermal surveys. Uh, however, we did have to adapt the large scale system intended for the oil and gas industry, which you can see here on the left hand side, which was uh, too expensive and maybe too intimidating uh, and make something that is much more fit for the scale of the geothermal industry, which is you see the one here on the bottom right corner, a system that is much more modular, compact and simple to use. Um, um, and that has uh, has really um, shown a, a quite incredible uptake uh, for, of this technology um, by the geothermal industry and actually other renewables as well. So um, stride, um, our experience in, in geothermal is um, actually it's quite, it's quite in, given the fact that we've been here for only for two years and we've seen uh, quite huge number of projects uh, using the strides for geothermal. You know, up to now, we've got about, well, probably about 12 projects for geothermal uh, as we speak uh, in the last two, um, two years, um, covering locations like the US, UK, Belgium, France, Netherlands, Swiss, even Indonesia. Uh, we are actually acquiring the largest UK um, uh, survey for geothermal ever acquired. Um, and we've got the mixture actually of types of, of usage for geothermal as we speak. We said earlier, we can use this for monitoring for passive seismic, using this for 2D um, exploration or, or actually also for 3D high density seismic uh, to inform the drilling um, um, uh, activity. Um, in fact, the stride system is, has been such a disruptive system that um, in the way that it has increased seismic acquisition efficiency um, to the point that the two densest land seismic survey on the planet now have actually been acquired with the stride system combined with some sort of other source uh, techniques. So the example here on the left is from a survey acquired by, um, by ADNOC in the UAE. For This was for the oil and gas exploration, but um, that, was, that one hit 184 million trespass per square kilometers, which was uh, then the densest land seismic survey ever acquired, even by the oil and gas standards. Uh, but a couple of years later, uh, this uh, record was broken again by, uh, by by Stride compared with other other systems as well. Uh, but this time for CCUS industry uh, on the Kami site in Canada, you see the one on the right hand side, and that hit 257 million shares per square kilometers. And that's the one I would like to expand on a little bit because it, there's a lot of um, analogy with geothermal sites. So this what we call ultra high density survey was the result of a collaboration between Stride and um, Carbon Capture, Capture Canada and Explore uh, with, the, uh, um, with the purpose to bring intention, uh, attention to this new way of acquiring seismic for renewables. Uh, the survey aimed to acquire obviously useful data set of data set, active and, and passive, 
uh, and also test various seismic equipment and acquire data set for academic and commercial studies to support the CCUS uh, industry to de-risk de their um, uh, subsurface activities. Actually, this um, the data set is licensable. If people are interested, they, you know, they should just get in touch. Um, in terms of technology used in this uh, survey, you know, three main se seismic equipment technologies were used. We've got the stride nodes, obviously, which you can see here on the, on the left-hand side. This is the smallest and lightest autonomous node on the market. Each node weighed 150 grams and has a cylindrical shape of 13 by 4 centimeters. Um, the pinpoint source, which is the one you see on the, in, in the middle, um, is a portable source um, that can be operated by a crew on foot with no line clearance required. And on the right hand side, this is called a, a mini vib, or sometimes called the umbar vib, which is a, a, a miniature, a small vibro size, which is a shaking truck that um, makes or puts vibrations in the vibration in the subsurface. And this one is, is small enough actually to fit inside the uh, container. Um, in terms of operational efficiency, as you can see here, um, uh, the, the important thing is that the whole system was so easy to use that. Uh, the people who acquired this survey were not actually seismic experts, so they were mainly graduates, geoscientists. Um, so we had a field team of 10 people who deployed 20,000 of nodes, uh, of these nodes in five days. Um, and eight people actually were used for to pick up the, 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 the nodes at the end. And over a thousand nodes actually per person per day were deployed in some days. Uh, and then we've got the two sources that were used, the pinpoint I did the uh, nearly about 600 shot points per day, and the, the Envira Vibe did about 650 uh, shots per day. Um, about these, the images that were uh, um, delivered for the subsurface in this one is that we've got, well, you have to know that different parts of the seismic records allow you to image different parts of the subsurface. For example, here, refraction tomography was used uh, to invert for the near surface velocity model, which you can see here on the left-hand side, on the bottom, this uh, colorful, beautiful, colorful cube. Um, and um, both type of sources delivered similar images um, down to about 150 meters uh, with a, a very high lateral resolution, distinguishing geological features that are about 40 meters apart at 50 meters depth. The reflection seismic data, uh, which you can see here on the right hand side, is used in a more complex way uh, to produce seismic cubes or 3D images of the subsurface. Uh, what stood out from this phase was the high resolution of the uh, shallow target. Um, image which um, which corresponds to the injection layer about 300 meters, which you can see this channel sand here, um, and that was thanks to the high spatial uh, sampling of the, uh, of the source to 7.5 7.5 meters combined with the strides which were also at 7.5 by 7.5 meter. The Vibro size here delivered a much better image also of the uh, deeper target, and this is a legacy data set which was acquired in a much sparser way a few years ago, uh, and obviously you can see that these features just completely um, um, not visible in the, in the legacy data set. Uh, another way where um, the impact of nodal systems is uh, uh, in geothermal is seen is uh, when um, companies are, are moving to 3D in a much, much more easier way. So the example here, the, here you see on the screen is courtesy of our clients, um, Hita and uh, Refound Seismic and GTG, who has turned this 2D job into a 3D survey for geothermal applications in, in Belgium. So, um, RTAs have actually made this a common practice to lay multiple live 2D lines before starting the shooting. This allows um, basically all the lines to record uh, all the sources when they are fired. And this is obviously made possible by the availability of a large nodal system that can be laid uh, across urban environments very easily before we start shooting. Um, another free byproduct of, um, of nodal systems um, is actually the continuous recording, uh, which means that even if you are using um, active seismic during the day, the other time, like uh, during the night, for example, the silent time is also recorded, recorded and um, if, uh, is referred to as passive seismic and can be converted into what we call virtual sources using uh, the ambient noise in the environment uh, around the area, um, or also can be used to listen to the induced or the, to the natural seismicity of the area. So the example here on the screen on the left-hand side shows uh, virtual shots here compared to an active shot to the left. Uh, so this virtual shot uh, was created using the ambient noise in, in Padua town in Italy for an archaeological application. And on the right-hand side, uh, you can see the installation of those fried nodes um, to report induced seismicity before um, and during an injection activity on the land survey in Australia. Uh, and one final example of the renewables is the stride nodes uh, were used actually recently uh, in, in France for passive and active seismic survey on the Pyrenees. 
um, uh, for natural hydrogen exploration. Um, in this experiment, it was very obvious that the compactness of the nodes was um, a game changer for acquiring seismics, uh, seismic in such difficult um, access terrain, um, where it can obviously take many hours actually to go to every single station to, to, to deploy your, uh, the system. So more should be published on this, uh, on this subject uh, uh, very soon. So uh, these are the last couple of slides. So what could help increase the uptake of seismic by geothermal and other renewables in general? Actually, we need more seismic surveys for renewables to prove uh, its value to the stakeholders and the end users. Uh, we need integrated service offers. Um, the, the geothermal and renewables actually do not have the same resources as the oil and gas industries. And we, we need also more innovation on the source side to make it smaller, uh, lower um, cost and also more user friendly. And also we need the regulations actually to adapt and ask for more of this uh, product in the, in the future. So to conclude, uh, we've seen that Seismic has the right depth of investigation, resolution and sensitivity and already proved its value in the oil and gas exploration. So it should be a very good tool for geothermal. We've seen that new equipment is smaller, lighter, more uh, cost efficient and easy to use. Um, also more innovation needed for the sources. We've seen that passive recording uh, record is a free byproduct of model systems and can be a quite use, useful um, um, data set for uh, monitoring um, uh, induced and natural seismicity of uh, geothermal sites. And then finally, we've seen that more tailored seismic surveys for renewables, including geothermal, um, is, is acquired um, to prove its value basically to the end users. So this is the end of the presentation and we probably can go to the Q&A session now. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amin. So I'm going to introduce um, Nick Tranter to the stage. He's also with Stride and we'll, we will transition into the Q&A portion of the session. Um, audience, if you have questions, we have a, a, a few um, already coming in. If you have questions, put them in the blue bar at the bottom of the screen and I will see them. I will not, I do see some questions coming in on the chat. I'm not able to see that when I'm live on the screen. So I won't, I won't be able to monitor that. So make sure you put it in the blue bar your screen. All right, so let's get started, fellas, with the questions. First question to come in. What is the continued importance of seismic interpretation in geothermal operations versus pre-project applications? What do you think? Yeah, so it depends on what type of geothermal um, play you have. So in, if, you took, if you talk about an, an, the classic geothermal play where you're injecting basically water into a formation, uh, well, you need to know where that water is going. You need to know how the, um, uh, well, there, there's, there's, there's the imaging part of it where you need to know where, 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 you, where your water is going, but also there's the, the monitoring of the induced seismicity that is created by the injection of that water. So um, uh, throughout the history of your site, you've got, um, if you look, if you are worried about the induced seismicity, there's something called, you have to record the baseline. So the natural seismicity, seismicity needs to be recorded before you start your project. And then during the project, so that you can have the database to prove to regulators that you're not creating any unwanted mini earthquakes, uh, so to say. Uh, the other part is just imaging of the subsurface. So this is just knowing where you're drilling, um, especially if you are drilling a new well, um, you know, this has been listed on the first slide. For example, if you hit a fracture, uh, a fault, or if you hit a cast, what have you, that's, that's you well gone. Um, and that could cost you, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars, depending on the complexity of your geothermal play. Here's a related question, actually, that I probably should have wrapped in to the one I just asked, which is how critical is the application of this technology in hot, dry rock? type applications versus traditional hydrothermal applications? So essentially dry versus wet. Well, it's, 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 it's basically the same thing. You know, if you, if you know, if you know enough of the subsurface so that you can, you can drill blindly, you know, that's, that's also possible. And now you have to manage, that's why, that's why I was saying, you know, you have to prove the value of seismic to these, uh, to these applications. So in my view, as a, as a seismic professional coming from the oil and gas, there is no oil and gas industry that will drill a well blind. There's no way you can, you will gonna, you're gonna drill uh, just based on 
you know, on a pre-knowledge without any image of the subsurface. So uh, what we are seeing with the geothermal is that um, obviously there, is, there are not as many projects uh, as there has been oil and gas. And that's probably statistically, that's probably why we haven't hit that point where the value of seismic is seen as very important. Uh, although we are seeing now regulations changing. I think I've heard, I've heard recently that France is, is making mandatory um, uh, to acquire seismic before you drill any well um, uh, for geothermal applications. Uh, that was uh, said to me a few months ago. So that's, you can see that now that maybe the easy geothermal sites have been found, whether they're dry or wet, it doesn't really matter. Um, now, moving forward, when things become more complex, you need to have an image of the subsurface so that you know where you're drilling into. It's um, so good day, everyone. It's a pleasure to be a part of Pivot 2022. So just to follow on from Amin's comments there, it's um, I think with seismic, we really, we really are trying to maximise the potential of the subsurface and just constantly increase our knowledge um, and sort of our understanding of what's happening down there. And the real need for seismic is to de-risk what's happening in our in our project and sort of de-risk on the economics, try to reduce um, sort of drilling failures and um, sort of um, de-risk and sort of increase and in safety of projects. And also look at the, the overall economics of projects as well, trying to maximise production. And at different stages of, um, of, um, of geothermal projects, we can bring in different seismic surveys, types, designs, whether it be 2D and sort of regional exploration, try and hydrate areas, or we can bring in high density 3D surveys, such as the, the CAMI um, project, which um, Jameen talked about, and this can be used over smaller patchwork areas to really try and sort of uh, you know, de-risk the actual drilling project itself. And then we can move on to the monitoring stage as well. So it's really just about applying the right survey at the right stage to de-risk that phase. Thanks, Nick. Can you all comment on the on the advantages of your method method compared to what they use in geothermal as standard now? So um, traditional methods, um, surface imaging gravity, mag you know, mag of techniques. Yeah, so the seismic resolution is, is, is and depth of investigation is, um, is just right. Uh, so most of those, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean that it's going to replace all those other methods, uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's complementary method. Uh, the thing is that with seismic, you get the resolution of tens of meters, sometimes even higher. Um, you can, investigate depths to six, even you know, down to about 12 kilometers in some cases. Uh, there, there are actually no other geophysical method that can do the same thing. Um, and that's something I touched on at the beginning of the presentation is also that um, seismic images are very um, representative of the structural geology of the surface, which is not the case for, for example, gravimetry or, or other um, uh, potential methods. Uh, because they are sensitive to different you know, physical properties in the subsurface. And sometimes the images they deliver, uh, although they have a physical meaning, they, they don't really represent the geological structure of the subsurface. So seismic is, is very um, humanly interpretable, if you, if you see what I mean. Yeah. That's and it's, what I mean. Um, yeah, sorry, then just to follow, sorry, yeah. just to follow what I mean on that one. I'm a big, big advocate of, sort of trying to de-risk um, projects and always feel like the more data you can bring into projects, um, whether it be complementary data or sort of a lead data set, as soon as we can bring all these data, uh, different data types together, work with them, interpret them, just to seek that end goal um, to de-risk projects is uh, really, the, really the aim of it. Awesome. All right, next question. In a hot granitic geothermal reservoir, what acoustic impedance contrast would you to delineate the boundary of such a reservoir? What do you think? Yeah, um, you get some, well, the, the, the hot water usually, you know, it, the changes in, in, the, uh, in the impedance is not high enough to be seen by seismic in most of the time. However, the changes in the, in the formation that is induced by that hot water, um, that will vary with different uh, geological uh, geological formations. That can create layers of of, uh, of contrast and impedance that can be uh, can, can be seen by the um, uh, by the seismic. So it it all geologically dependent. What seismic will definitely give you is the image of the matrix, um, 
and the fluid contents um, can be derived from what we call seismic attributes later on. The, um, the seismic monitoring is, is also a, a very good kind of um, baseline because you have you know, what you are looking for, you're looking for changes. So if you have um, uh, a system that is already working and then you have a snapshot in time of what's happening you know, at, this, at this point in time, then during that um, uh, change, uh, well, um, capturing those changes uh, you know, a few months down the line or a few years down the line becomes much easier because you are repeating the seismic and actually whatever is changing is actually whatever happened during that, um, uh, that activity. Nick, can Nick you anything to add? I think I mean covered that well. Perfect. Can you undersample using compressive sensing to form good images and save cost? Yeah, that's a, it's a very technical question. Um, yes, you could uh, in certain conditions. Although, so compressive sensing for people who who are not familiar with this is to is a is is a way to define an, an optimum position of the source and the receivers on the subsurface. Uh, which are which are more close to random, so that you can um, overcome actually the sampling uh, the sampling limit. So, in my view, the the constraints on the subsurface on the surface, uh, um, especially for geothermal, what is main, which is mainly in urban environments or semi-urban environments, actually are too high to be able to add another constraint of linked to to compressive sensing. So, compressive sensing for me is more for open terrains. And, uh, and maybe for marine environments. And also it does require some pre-knowledge of the subsurface, which we don't necessarily have. So yeah, I'm, I'm not convinced compressive sensing is the right way to go for, for geothermal. Here's an interesting question on workforce. Since you all have been operating in oil and gas in this context, have you had to retrain your workforce to work in the geothermal context using your same technology? And what have you had to do to get that to work? Uh, it's, a, it's a good question. So that was, the, that was what we said at the beginning is that you know, when we started, our system was, was, uh, was designed for big oil and gas exploration, which actually our system could handle a million nodes uh, in the field. And that was obviously too big and too intimidating for the geothermal industry. Uh, when we started um, approaching the geothermal um, operators or contractors working for the job and op operators, uh, they wanted something more compact and more modular. And so and that's why we created that small system that would fit around an office environment, which I showed at the beginning. So that's the kind of the only thing that we had to do. Um, the rest is seismic is, it's a bit like ultrasound for medical imaging. So it's agnostic to the application. So whether you use it for, you know, to look for, uh, or for, for a baby or to look at, uh, at stones in the kidney, it doesn't really matter. The, the application is completely, um, um, is, 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 ir is irrelevant. However, what we have seen in comparison to the oil and gas industry is that the, uh, the resources the geothermal industry have access to is, is obviously not the same. So you will, um, you will need, they need support in terms of um, uh, helping them with the survey design, with the processing, uh, all the way sometimes to the to the interpretation, uh, and that's why at the end of the conclusion I said, you know, if you want to really bring the value up for geothermal, you know, the contractors need to offer a more integrated services so that you know all this hassle of handling the seismic from the acquisition all the way to the interpretation is actually taken away uh, by 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 the contractor. So we're, we're kind of in the boat we were in the last session where we have a whole lot of questions and four minutes left. So I'm going to ask one last question and then I'll give you each uh, a, a minute to, to close and, and, and explain what you think is next for your technology. Um, I'll just pick the one at the top of the list here. Can you use machine learning techniques to infer reservoir existence from matrix imaging? Um. Yes, um, definitely. You know, machine learning is 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 being used uh, more and more these days. And now, uh, it's um, it's a very wide question and uh, a very open question. So there's a lot of things that can be done uh, uh, as an application for machine learning for seismic. Uh, so yeah, in short, yes. However, machine learning needs a lot of training. So training needs a lot of data, and therefore we need more of seismic being acquired in geothermal, so that we can get to this. The model that will um, allow people actually to 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 achieve 
you know, useful and reliable information for machine learning algorithms. Awesome. So, so to the audience, um, there there are a lot of really technical questions here in this list, and and um, and Amin and, and Nick may be willing to to join us in the audience for a little bit here and uh, address some of the questions one on one in the. So, um, so f please feel free to reach out to them directly on some of these other questions. I wanted to, to take the last two minutes of the session to give to Div, Nick and Amina a second to to say what they think is next for the technology. So, so Amin, why don't you start? Where where do you see where do you see this headed in the next few years? I mean, what I would like to see is really an uptake of seismic. You know, seismic becoming um, the. Uh, the the, um, the method by default to go to before you start drilling in the subsurface. So as Nick said, you know, it's, it's all about de-risking your activities. So the more you know about the subsurface, the less, uh, well, the less um, risk you have to take um, in terms of you know, losing a well or, or having more issues later on. So what, what, would, what would be nice is to see is the, the, the end user of the geothermal um, industry where they're basically the operators uh, really requesting seismic as a tool um, to, to before they start their project and also maybe um, acquiring that seism seismic by themselves you know the side that we are putting a lot of effort into making making those techniques or te those technologies very user friendly uh, and as I said you know this densest land seismic survey on the planet was actually was not even acquired by by seismic professionals. And that's what uh, I would love to see in the future is, uh, is people needing seismic, you know, approaching us or approaching actually other other other, uh, other uh, uh, service providers um, and doing seismic by, by themselves and actually learning um, how to how to extract the best value of seismic for their, for their projects. Thanks, Amin. Nick? Yes, and it's, um, I mean, when you look back at Stride's history, just being a um, startup similar to other companies in this session, and um, when we when we started two years ago, it was very much aimed for the oil and gas market. But we fast forward to, to today, and fifty percent of our projects are in the renewable sector. And I think that really shows the adaptability of the product into the market moving forwards. And I think the sort of the, the main sort of area that we're looking at moving forwards is just growing into the market and um, becoming more um, sort of more recognised in that sense. And I think if you look at the current project we're working on here in the UK, it's the, the first ever 3D seismic survey and um, specifically for geothermal purposes. And we also believe that it's the, um, we will have the highest trace density of any seismic survey um, for onshore UK. So we actually now are seeing that technology, which previously wasn't part, um, or which previously was only ever sort of affordable in oil and gas, we're actually moving that forwards and sort of jumping over oil and gas and uh, now putting a geothermal and the renewables uh, sector with this uh, sort of high-end technology um, right at the forefront. Awesome. Well, thank you both for leading the way in geothermal. That's awesome. Um, what We have to take a five-minute break really quick, and we will in introduce our next startup. Many thanks to both of you for the presentation, and we'll see everybody in a few minutes. Thank you.